Hi everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. Um, this is another video I'm doing on logic. Today I'm going to talk about fuzzy logic. Um, some of you guys may have heard of this, I'm not sure. It's a relatively new area of logic, kind of an alternate to Boolean algebra, or extension of Boolean algebra, if you like. Um, and this uh, cover slide shows us so as an example of that. I'll get into this later. Anyway, let's begin. So um, anyway, first we need to define fuzzy logic. And um, fuzzy logic is an approach to um, logic that allows uh, multiple possible truth values. So in, in Boolean logic, uh, everything is either true or false. Every statement, uh, maybe not every statement. I talked about you know, the liar paradox in a previous video. I mean, there are some statements that refer to themselves that you can't you know, consistently assign truth values or true or false to. But, you know, there's a good, uh, you know, for, for most of what logic is concerned with most sentences, or at least legal sentences, if you like, you can assign a truth value, either true or false, zero or one. So that's kind of the most simplest kind of logic. That's probably the most intuitive kind of logic either. Every statement's either true or false. But fuzzy logic, it's not so black and white. I mean, you can have uh, shades of gray in between. It can... The truth value of any any um, statement, any sentence, can I have an arbitrary real value between zero and one? It doesn't have to be zero one. It could be a half. It could be a third. It could be anything you like. that's between zero and one. So that's what fuzzy logic is. And um, you know, of course, there's rules associated with them. And uh, you know, just let me before I get into the rules, let's just uh, give you a specific example. A good example, and you see this one a lot: temperature you know, hot, cold. I mean, obviously, it's not always just hot or cold. It can be in between. It can be room temperature, you know. That's kind of medium or moderate. So uh, if you ask the question, is it hot? I mean, right now here, you know, my office is probably about 70 degrees. I wouldn't say that's hot or cold. That's room temperature. It's comfortable. So I would say moderately. You can give the, this, the you know, the truth value of it's hot, a value of 0 0.5, but it's also just as true that it's cold because it's in the middle. So that's kind of how it goes. And, you know, if it was 100 degrees, you could give, uh, you know, is it hot, a very high truth value, probably 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0 0.99, whatever you like. But obviously it's going to be bigger than 0 0.5. And if it's 0 degrees, then that's very cold. So you probably wouldn't want to say it's hot. So that would probably be like 0 0.01. So I think you get the idea. There's kind of a gradation of how hot it is, you know. And it makes more sense intuitively, I think. You know, uh, temperature is kind of a fuzzy, uh, um, uh, what do they call that, a predicate, you know, a, f a fuzzy uh, adjective, if you like. And, and uh, so you can't give it a zero or one. You have to give it a value in the middle. So, uh, and there's, uh, you know, there's rules, obviously. Just like there's rules for Boolean algebra, there's rules for fuzzy, fuzzy algebra, fuzzy logic, if you like. So, uh, you know, and I think you guys all know the rules for Boolean algebra and you just, uh, you know, uh, take the, the min. I mean, if, if two, you know, there can only be zero or one. So you say a and b is false if and only if at least one of them is false. And it's true only if both of them are true. That's the same as and, right? Um, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you can think of some good examples of that. Like, uh, you know, I'm holding up my left hand and I'm holding up my right hand. I can't. You know, I have to be holding up both. It's only true if I'm holding up both. If I'm just holding up my right hand, then uh, it's false that I'm both holding up both hands. Same if I'm holding up my left hand or if I'm holding up no hand. So there's only one case in which the, the, you know, the conjunction is true. That's if both uh, X and Y are true. And, and fuzzy, uh, we just generalize that by making it a min. You know, so say, uh, you know, I mean, say you're asking, is it hot in Denmark and is it hot in Las Vegas? Well, maybe it's... 30 degrees right now in Denmark, and it's uh, 80 degrees in Las Vegas. It's not really, but it could be. So, you know, it's hot here in Vegas, but it's obviously pretty cold in Denmark. So what would you say? I mean, uh, you know, you could give these things truth values that aren't necessarily between 0 and 1. Maybe the truth value of it being hot in Denmark is 0.1, but, that, you know, the truth value of it being hot in Vegas is point, um, 0.9. So... So, you know, you take the min, and that's 0.1. Well, it's not hot in both, but it's hot in, you know, it's hot in uh, Vegas. So, um, but that doesn't make it hot in both. And if you wanted or, you take the max. So that would be 0.9. So you see how it works? You're taking the max. If you're doing not, 
So is it cold in Vegas? Uh, well, that would be one minus the truth value of being hot. And since the truth value of being hot is 0 0.9, the truth value of being cold is 0.1. It's not cold in Vegas. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it has a low truth value, not zero. Some people might think it's hot or cold, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's subjective, right? So you get the idea. These things aren't as, as set in stone. They're not as black and white. That's why they're called fuzzy. And we apply the same kind of rules as we do to Boolean algebra. And uh, another notion that's important in fuzzy logic is, um, uh, so this is just how the operators work. But another way you can think about this thing, uh, people also talk about fuzzy sets. Maybe, maybe I should go, uh, go to the next slide. Well, here's another example of temperature. So, so, you know, like here you have three different kinds of temperature, cold, warm, and hot. And I guess you, you would say that it can you know, only really be one of either the, any of the three. So, you know, the probability, I mean, not probability, but the truth value of it being cold uh, is one minus the truth value of being warm. Similarly, the truth value of being hot is one minus the truth value of being warm because they're mutually exclusive, supposedly. But since, you know, there's, there's uh, values between zero and one of it being cold or warm or hot, then you know you have to apply the same rules for the not uh, operator, and uh, yeah, this is the next one I wanted to show you. Uh, it, it's helpful to think of these things as sets. So that also people talk about fuzzy sets, and another way to say it's hot is to say that um, you know uh, um, I mean is it hot in Las Vegas? Well, another way you can ask that question: Does Las Vegas belong to the hot set? Does it belong to the set of things that are hot? And, uh, you know, in, in Boolean algebra, or, or just in, 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 you know, naive set theory, either things belong to a set or they don't. So you can think of it in terms of uh, set theory. Another way to say that it's hot in Las Vegas is to say that Las Vegas is an element of the hot set. Uh, but in fuzzy logic, you have these things called fuzzy sets. So, you know, if the truth value of being hot in Vegas is 0 0.9, that means that the that, um, you know, there's a 90, you can think of it as like a probability. There's a 90% probability that Las Vegas belongs to the hot set. So it's not so it's and so, and that's why they're called fuzzy sets. The membership is kind of fuzzy. There's a 90% chance that Las Vegas is a member of the hot set, but there's a 10% chance it's not. This kind of reminds me of quantum mechanics where you have, you know, wave functions of, uh, you know, atoms, you know, you have these kind of electron clouds, and it's kind of the same idea. You know, in quantum mechanics, you can't say exactly where an electron is in an atom. You have this kind of electron cloud, which gives you a probability distribution. So it's kind of like this, you know, but anyway, so that just, you know, that's another way to think about fuzzy logic, fuzzy sets. And, uh, you know, the, and the, you know these, these rules aren't really set in stone either. I mean, the only, the only rules we need we need a consistent set of rules that make sure that, that all of our probabilities, all of our, uh, you know, values of the, uh, you know, the fuzzy logic, um, you know, uh, uh, variables is, is a real number between zero and one. And, you know, and it should be less than, less than or equal to either of them, or it should be greater than or equal to either of them. And you don't have to use the rules we started with. You don't have to say X and Y is the min and, and uh, x or y is the max. You can say x and y is the product. You know, this is a little more like probability theory. You know, that's why I think I think this is nice because you can. I think you can you can probably probability you can probably re recast. Pro I don't know if this is true, but my feeling is I'm not an expert on fuzzy logic, but my feeling is you could probably recast probability theory in the guise of fuzzy logic if you want. But I think fuzzy logic is more general than. I mean, the rule that we have for and on this slide is the same rule we have for independent um, events. You know, I mean, you know, if, if uh, the probability of tossing uh, two heads in a row is uh, probably the first to toss is a head and the probability times the probability of the second toss a head. So each toss is one half, the probability of both is a quarter. That's how this rule would work. And the not is the same thing. The probability that its tail is one minus the probability of its head. So... So this looks like probability theory here, but it's also another uh, alternative rule for, for fuzzy operators. And uh, that's and, or, and not. And you, you know that, that's a complete set of uh, logical operators, both in Boolean algebra and in uh, fuzzy algebra, fuzzy logic. So, 
And then, you know, if and then. Uh, and you can define if then in terms of and and or. The way I always learned it in Boolean algebra, if A then B is the same as A, not A or B. You know, there is controversy about that. I think if and, if the if then operator is probably the most controversial operator in, uh, in Boolean algebra, you know, particularly if the, you know, if A is false, what do you, how do you define uh, A, if A and then B? By default, we could define them as true, but we didn't really have to do that. So a lot of people don't really like the rule for if then, but but if we you know we can consistently say that if a and then b is equivalent to not a or b, and since we already defined and or and not for Boolean algebra, we can still define if then the same way. I think that's what's done, and and the nice thing about that is if then is a nice thing for for um, you know, computer algorithms, right? I mean, if you have a flowchart, your flowchart usually has you know has a lot of if then. Um, you know, uh, loops in it. You know, if uh, some conditions uh, satisfied go one way in the in the um, uh, flow chart, if it, if it's not, go go a different way. And uh, you know that that makes it possible to write uh, fuzzy computer algorithms. Uh, and uh, you know this has been done. And I think I think this is a pretty revolutionary form of computer programming. I mean. You know, so this this allows us to do things like thermostat control in a really nice way, and a lot of other control systems where your input is fuzzy. I mean, you know, like a thermostat. How does the thermostat work? Well, thermostat will kick on. You know, either it'll, it'll cool down the room if you're if the room is too hot, or it'll warm up the room if the room is too cold. But it's kind of fuzzy how hot or how cold the room is, right? You have to have kind of a temperature threshold. So. You know, uh, this is a case where fuzzy logic really comes in handy. And, you know, if you want to do this, uh, if you want to write a computer program to do this, the first thing you have to do is you have to, trans you have to translate your qualitative data, which is your temperature, which I guess is a continuous variable. You have to discretize it so that, you know, computers only work with discrete values. So you kind of discrete the... Uh, uh, the, I, I guess quant, qualitative maybe doesn't mean numbers. Like quanti, quantitative can mean continuous variables, I guess. But the, the nice thing about fuzzy rules is that the inputs can be, can be uh, continuous. They don't have to be discrete. So you apply the fuzzy rules. You, know, you have your inputs, and then you apply your fuzzy logic to come up with an output. And I think you're going to get some kind of probability. Just for, you're going to get an answer that's between 0 and 1. And then you have to defuzzify the data that your output. And once you've defuzzified it, then you can do your output. Either the thermostat goes on and cools the room, or the thermostat doesn't go on, or the thermostat goes on and heats the room, that kind of thing. So anyway, you know, uh, I think it's a lot more complicated than I just said, but I think you get the idea. And uh, this can get a lot more complicated. Here's a more complicated example. So here you've got several different sets involved. I guess they call them L, S, and L minus S. I don't, I don't even know what all these things are. It looks like there's five different variables here. And they can have different degrees of fuzziness. And, and then, uh, you know, you have to um, use your fuzzy logic to come up with an output. And that's what this thing is doing. So these algorithms can look pretty complicated. But... But, you know, you can apply them. You can apply fuzzy logic to come up with fuzzy algorithms. And I haven't actually done this kind of programming. I've heard it has been used a lot, though. And I've actually heard that it's very useful. I think it's even used in neural nets. Uh, I think it is a, uh, you know, kind of a growing form of, uh, of computer programming. I just haven't used it yet, you know. Uh, but I have done a lot of computer programming. And I've done some pretty fancy computer programming. I know object-oriented programming. I think that's a different thing. But um, And I know about neural nets. I've just never actually programmed a neural net. I think this is closely related to, to neural nets. And uh, I know this is a very popular form of programming right now. As a matter of fact, I know it's also used in, in things like ChatGPT, you know, all this fancy AI we have today. I think this does involve a lot of fuzzy logic. I'm not mistaken. So, so I think fuzzy logic is one of the keys to to really advanced AI and maybe even passing the Turing test. So anyway, um, I think that's all I have to say about fuzzy logic. 
Thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.